Hello everybody, it's Kim, and I'm here to talk to you about my experience with illegal corporate government stalking and food poisoning. So, we're going to start in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Greenfield, Wisconsin, and we're also going to talk about stores in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, uh, where I've experienced buying bad food that has made me sick. So... Let's start with Outpost Foods in Wauwatosa. Okay, Outpost Foods, uh, first of all, I want to excuse my appearance. I'm still in my role because I've been sick for two days off of food that I've gotten from Fondy's Food Market. So I thought that instead of buying food from the grocery store, it would be much safer to buy food at the farmer's market. And I guess I was wrong because I've been sick for two days from food I bought at Fondy's Food Market. But we're not going to talk about the food from Fondy's Food Market too much today because I'm still evaluating uh, all of the fruits and vegetables that I bought there. So we'll touch on that another time. So today we're going to start with Outpost Natural Foods, Walmart, Meyer, uh, Marshalls, Home Goods, and Pick and Save. So these are food, these are stores that I've been stalked in and have been getting food poisoning from. So Outpost Foods, actually, I haven't got any poisonous food from them yet. But I did, I have been stalked in that store from Milwaukee to Wauwatosa. So I brought a letter to the Outpost Foods in Wauwatosa. And it read something like this, uh, to Outpost Natural Foods. I would like to see racist corporate government stalking stopped immediately. This new form of harassment and discrimination against law-abiding citizens of the United States of America is unlawful and must end now. I've been harassed, stalked, refused service, and had products that I shop for in your store removed, changed, or altered because I am a black female vegetarian trying to maintain my health through proper nutrition and diet. How are you or your store involved in this illegal stalking operation? I enter your store to shop for the products that I would like to enjoy, and upon entering the store and being followed by a random stalker or stalkers, the stalkers may already be in the store. The stalkers are often store employees. These stalkers attempt to look in my cart, basket, or bag before or after I check out, and may even follow me throughout the store and attempt to find out what I'm buying or shopping for. This information is relayed to a store manager or someone in corporate, and the items I was once able to purchase at your store or any store in your chain are permanently or temporarily removed, changed or altered in some way, and I am demanding that this illegal racist harassment and stalking stop now, or I will be taking further action. So although I have been yet to find any poisonous food and outpost, outpost natural foods, thank God, uh, there have been times when I went to the store to buy certain items and they were temporarily removed. Um, I used to go to the Outpost Foods in Milwaukee and sometimes have a bite to eat there. And another thing that the stalkers do uh, is destroy nature in the area. And there was a, I guess it was a juniper tree or something that was cut down right there next to where I was sitting. I didn't even notice it. It was another, uh, because where I was sitting was kind of a little bit ways from the tree, but somebody that had frequented the store more often pointed out that they had cut down that tree close by to where I was sitting. But we're talking about food today, not trees. I was just pointing that information out. So after I bought, brought that letter to Outpost Foods on April 9th, I received a letter back from them on April 27th that says, thank you for taking the opportunity to write to Outpost. I am sorry you are not finding some of your favorite products any longer at our Wauwatosa location. Uh, Outpost will from time to time discontinue products for a variety of reasons. Those reasons are the manufacturer no longer makes the product or dis distributor no longer carries the product or sales volume of the product at Outpost are so slow that product languishes on our shelves and goes out of date. 
These decisions are all based on reports our purchasing staff use from our cash register systems and are not made by staff within the store location. I can assure you that we do not employ staff to monitor customer baskets, carts, or bags. And in the tradition of our founders, every person is welcome at Outpost. We are open to every person who would like to purchase our goods or use our services. If I can be of any other assistance, please do not hesitate to let me know. Sincerely, Ed Singer. Director of Store Operations, Highland Avenue, Outpost Natural Foods. And that is a lie. First of all, I asked the manager that I gave the letter to to pass the information on to the Milwaukee store, also where I was being stalked at. And there were products that were not actually shelf products uh, that were not in the store on several days that I came into the store and then they were re-added to the store. Re-added back or they were there another day, actually deli items. But uh, regardless of that, when I gave this letter to the manager at the outpost in Wabatosa, he seemed very young ho about resolving uh, the problems that I've been having with the stalking. But the next time I came into the store, I was stalked again. Uh, by stalkers that were customers and also store employees. Um, I also received very bad service uh, from the deli that day because when I brought the letter to the manager, I also complained about a vendor who was rude to me. And normally I would never make a complaint about a vendor. I just went by their product. So that day I actually bought, brought the, bought the vendor's product and decided I was going to complain about the service I received from the vendor since I was already had the complaint letter that I was going to give to the manager. So when I gave the letter to the manager, like I said, he was very gung ho about resolving the issue. And he actually had the vendor removed from the store. So the vendor was actually out of the store before I was out of the store with uh, the few things that I was buying at the store. When I came back to the store, uh, to buy a deli product, I received very poor service and the product was not the same great product that it normally was from the deli person. So the deli person that prepared this product for me, I don't actually think that they were a part of the stalking, but they seen that when I made the complaint to the manager, the vendor was removed from the store. So sometimes when you make a complaint at a store, you're looked at as a troublemaker. But I was just there to give a valid complaint about what was going on. And the vendor who happened to give me poor service, who I would probably not have even complained about had I not been making a complaint already in the store, was asked to leave the store. Came back to the store a second time, was still stalked by stalkers that were customers in the store trying to look in my car. I had my cart, uh, some of the things in my cart covered that day, but the employees were stalking me. So, um, as I said, I was still being stalked in that store, even after uh, making the complaint. And it's something the manager says doesn't go on me. So I don't know. I don't really go to Outpost Foods enough to. Uh, to say I've been poisoned there as of yet. Uh, I bought an item the second time I returned to the store that definitely has been tainted or food poisoned. And the organic product that I bought at Outpost Food seemed okay. But because I'm being stalked and because of the service that I receive at Outpost Foods, I don't make it my business to go out of my way to visit the store even though it's a store that I like, and I like some of the products in the store. So that's Outpost Foods. So on 411, I brought the same letter to Walmart at 4140 West Greenfield Avenue in West Milwaukee. And the item that I purchased was one of my favorite teas that Walmart, for some reason, no longer carries. Uh, along with the Meyer store that used to carry it. I no longer see this particular tea in the store. So like I said, items are being removed from the store, changed and altered, and now also food poison. So 
So I'm going to talk about some of the products at Walmart that have definitely been tainted. Okay, I went to the Walmart. in Greenfield, Wisconsin, and bought several items, including white kernel popcorn. Uh, first of all, let me go back a little bit. I'd also shopped at the Walmart at Lake, in Lake Tomahawk, Wisconsin, when I was at Camp uh, American Legion. And I walk in that Walmart uh, in Lake Tomahawk, or it was a city very close to it, can't quite remember the name of it. I walk in that Walmart. Anyway, it's a ways out. And I walk through the fruit and vegetable section, and there's nobody in the, there's no stockers, stalkers, I mean food stockers that are in the aisles. As soon as I walk through the vegetable section and, you know, maybe for a couple of minutes, next thing you know, there's 10 stockers all throughout the fruit and vegetable section and all throughout the food aisles in Walmart. So I asked one of them a question, which was a mistake, about where is the popcorn. He was very rude. And then the other lady started to show me the popcorn. And after being rude to me, he followed to pretend like he was showing me where it was also. First, he showed me a display of popcorn that I didn't even want. You know, I was asking where the section of popcorn was. And so... I didn't buy any popcorn at that time because it just wasn't what I wanted. And um, I guess it was a mistake for me to ask the question, or maybe it wasn't. But anyway, they knew that popcorn might be something I might buy at Walmart. So I, the next time, um, back in town, West Dallas, I actually live in West Dallas. We're going to touch on West Dallas food poisoning also. Uh, in some of the next videos because I've got a big huge bag of food from West Dallas stores that's been tainted poison or whatever the hell's wrong that I can't eat it. Anyway, I, I have, have been a vegetarian for over 20 years. I've been studying food and nutrition since I was seven years old. So I know good food, bad food, and simply fucked up food like this food I've been buying in the store that's been tainted and poisoned. So the next time I'm in town at the Walmart in Greenfield, I buy several things, including some white kernel Jolly Time popcorn. And this popcorn gave me a stomach ache and just made me overall not feel good and sick. So I didn't even finish the bag. I popped one pan of that popcorn and I'm about to return it to the store. So, here's what some of this popcorn looks like. I don't know if you can see, but if you've noticed, for example, this is white popcorn. It's not supposed to be brown or yellow. When I first opened the bag, it smelled chemically. It had a chemical smell like, I guess, dishwashing liquid, a strong dishwashing liquid kind of chemical smell. So, some of it is... I don't even know if you can see it here. You can't even really see it, but let's see if I can get closer. You probably still can't see it. It's brown. It's just... I said you probably can't see it. It's brown. Some of it looks rotten. Uh, the size of the kernels are very uneven. Um... And there's brown streaks in it. So I also examined the bag of popcorn and smelled it even before I popped it and felt like something was wrong with the popcorn because of the uneven size of the kernel, the brown streaks in the kernel, the rotten pieces, there's broken pieces. And I just have never seen a bag of white popcorn like that, especially coming from Jolly Time. So that's going to be returned to the store. That was at the Greenfield Walmart. As I said before, I had mentioned popcorn at uh, Lake Tom at the Lake Tomahawk Walmart, and uh, they knew I they know I like popcorn anyway. There's really not a whole lot of 
different foods that I eat at the store. So I guess I'm a person that could possibly be easy to stalk and also food poison because you know all of the foods in the store that I'm not going to eat. There's going to be a very few select foods that I'm going to eat out of the store. And I've even had to change those up, as I was told by a person that left a comment that said they were also being stalked. I have to move around to different stores. I have to change up my products, even if I don't want to, because the next time I come into the store for the products, uh, they'll be tainted or poisoned. So also at, at Lake Tomahawk, or is it Naquan? I'm not even exactly sure of the city, but it's a way. It's near Lake Tomahawk. It's the Walmart in the closest city near Lake Tomahawk. I bought plums. I bought great value Walmart chips. And I asked about the popcorn. So when I get back and buy something at the Walmart in Greenfield, the plums and the great value Walmart chips I have here. I ate a couple of servings of these chips and could not finish the bag. So regardless of whether they say I, how many I ate or whatever, I did eat some of those chips and was sick all day. Bananas. I have only found like two places that had good bananas in the last I would say three to four months. Every other banana has been tainted. So these Del Monte bananas that I bought from Walmart are tainted and or food poisoned. And they're going back to the store. Plum is one of my favorite foods that I bought at the Lake Tomahawk Walmart. I couldn't eat one of these plums. And I was sick. Stomach pain. So from all this food that I ate that day that I bought from Walmart, let's see what day I bought this, exactly what day. Bear with me here. That was just about a week ago on 7-16. Okay, I will sit that whole day from two bananas, half a plum, and a couple of servings of chips that I couldn't finish. So like I said, the plums and the great value chips were chips that I had bought at the Walmart near Lake Tomahawk because I can no longer get the chips I really like at uh, Target, the, blue, the organic blue corn chips with flax seeds because they, they poison me. So I decided to try some different chips from Walmart, and by the next time that I went back to get those chips, about a month later, they were poisoned. So what happens if they're poisoning the food that I'm going to buy in Walmart or Target or Meyer or any place like that because they know what I like, they're stalking me? That means other people are also going to get this same poisoned food. And of course, your reaction to it may be a little bit different than mine. It may be worse. It may be better. But regardless, who wants poison food? Although we know that most of the food in the store is poisonous anyway. As a person that's trying to eat healthy and right, um, it's just getting harder and harder for me to do that as you see everywhere I go and being stalked and food poisoned. So let's move on to, is there, to, to another Walmart. Let's see. At this Walmart, that's the same Walmart in Greenfield on 421. I bought a bunch of radishes. A Cliff Bar, a Luna Bar. Cliff Bar has now changed the recipe, whatever the hell they got in that shit now. I'm allergic to I can't eat it. Luna Bar has not changed the recipe, but they're all on sale. So maybe after all the sale items are gone, they might change their recipe too. So the Cliff Bars are no longer a gluten free product because they put something in there that is not gluten-free, and I can't eat it, whatever it is. So at that Walmart, I bought an Axel Pure water, which was fine at that Walmart. And at another store, I bought it at Meijer, but then I went to go get it at another store, and the packaging had changed. 
and it was no longer fine at that particular store, Absol Pure Water, I thought was a small family-owned company. But it seems like any and every vendor can participate in this food poisoning. I call it corporate government food poisoning at the whim of whoever tells them to do so. So I'm just looking at telling you about some of the things I bought at Walmart on uh, 421 that were poisoned at a later date at other stores. Fresh thyme. Fresh time, I always say that long. A store in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, I bought several items at the store. On June 17th, most of them were good except for the plantain banana. I got through about half of it and didn't feel very well and then threw it away because it tasted tainted and was making me not feel too good. So I'm wondering if I come in the first time store again on 470 East Pleasant Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. These same items that I buy will be okay or will they be tainted or poisoned? So let's move over to Meyer. Meyer. On 611 Meyer, I bought several things, including some radishes that were fucked up. Now, radishes are a very medicinal food. When you eat those, you could, you know, clear up an upset stomach or anything if they're not poisoned. These particular radishes has a beer, had a very hard bite. A harder bite, and what I mean, like a radish has a very kind of like a bitter bite. Those are normally the better radishes to eat if you taste like a flavorless radish. It was probably the bottom and the stem were cut off and they probably just, you know, had been in the bag too long. And sometimes you can revitalize that bite by putting them in water and leaving them out. But these radishes had a distinct, very hard bite, but I took two bites of the radishes and I had a stomach ache, a stomach spasm, spasm throughout my whole body. So I put them down and didn't eat them because I don't want to eat poisonous food and I don't want to be sick. Uh, for you, radishes from Surprise, Arizona, Medema, Pro Medema Produce Incorporated. I call them Surprise for you because you take a couple of bites of these radishes and you're going to be sick. Anyway, so I couldn't eat the radishes. It's another medicinal food that I can no longer uh, trust. i seen that For You brand. That was the first time that I can remember seeing the For You brand radishes because if something says for you, you're, you're normally going to remember. And maybe I have seen it before and just didn't recall. But I also seen uh, some of those same radishes in another store that I'm not mentioning here because... Uh, they haven't poisoned the food on me yet, or I just haven't been in there enough time for them to do so. So the four you radishes from Meyer, food poisoning. Meyer water. All about a water that I have bought in the last six months. Most of the, let's say most of the bought of water has been tainted that I bought in the last six months. So I just simply had to stop buying, and of course. Plastic bottled water is, is not good for you anyway because you're getting the plastic. So this was, everybody knows I love sparkling water, but I haven't been able to drink it lately because this water here, and you see how much I drank out of it? And started to feel sick, so I decided that that wasn't a good bottle of water for me to drink. Like I said, one of my favorite teas that I bought in Meyer on 512 at the Burline store appears to be no longer carried, but I'm going to double check that because I also go to the other Meyer. But I know it's no longer carried in Walmart. It was taken out of the Walmart on Capitol and the Walmart uh, in West Milwaukee. Guacamole, 
I bought at Meyer on five six. It was two for four dollars. What was I gonna say to watch out for things on sale? Watch out for product packaging changes. Watch out for recipe changes um, in products if you read the ingredients that are in products. And maybe you don't have to watch out for any of these things if you don't eat any of these same items, of course, that I'm talking about. But there could be other targets, other people that they're targeting in the area. Or you never know when they might just decide to food poison a particular store area because they feel like doing it. Anybody that thinks that most of these food poisoning cases out there is an accident, I don't think so. So I bought this same package of guacamole and it should have been a tip off that it was not going to be very good. I believe I bought it probably about a month and a half or so later. And I couldn't finish that guacamole. It made me sick. Headache. Stomach ache. And I didn't want to get any sicker, so I didn't finish that guacamole. And I guess the tip-off should have been, they already know I like avocado, which I feel like have been not looking as good as they used to, so I rarely buy them. And the tip-off should have been that it was, after a month and a half later, it was still 2 for $2.00. But it was a different product. It was no longer a good product. I couldn't finish eating it. So that's the food poisoning at Meyer. Now we're going to talk about a store that I went to in Milwaukee on Mitchell Street. And I had poisoned honey. Honey butter. From Mass Path, New York. As you see, I drank a decent portion of the honey within only like a day. And I said, I'm not going to drink the honey this time, although I do drink honey. But I kept tasting, I kept tasting it. I'm like, is this what's making me sick? Is it the honey or is it the dates? And I find out that it was both products that I'm getting sick from. These are what you call, I probably can't even pronounce it now. Cootery dates or quattery dates or something like that. Anyway, they used to be one of the best dates in the world. A very medicinal food. I love dates. So they know I like dates and they know a particular time when I'm going to get them. And of course, dates are seasonal products. So you know when I might go looking for dates. And um, if you can see how much, I would have I ate this box of dates within three days. I don't even know if you can see that. I'm going to have to hold it up a little better. I'm going to try to put things in the camera here. Anyway, there is, I don't even think I ate a third of the dates. And like I said, again, I probably wouldn't have ate that many had I not known if they were tainted. I also had another, I don't even want to say what I had. I had something else that I thought might be tainted. To tell you the honest to God truth, I thought everything that I bought from this damn school was poisoned or tainted. Okay, because when you keep tasting the food and that poison is in your body and it's in your mouth, then, you know, it can be hard, just a little hard to determine what's poison. So you have to come back to it and taste it again without having anything else in your mouth or, you know, come back the next day, taste it again. Okay, wait and taste the other product and wait some time and rinse your mouth out from the poison and make sure that you know exactly where the poison is coming from. Like all that food I just bought from the uh, fine East food market, I can't determine exactly what's poison, but I will determine what's poison after I finish evaluating that food. So one of my favorite foods in the whole wide world. This is an especially, dates are beneficial, especially good dates are beneficial for so many things. I mean, if you get some dates that are in a plastic package that are from, you know, California or something, they're just not going to be like these. And these dates came all the way from Saudi Arabia. But it looks like they were packaged in Los Angeles, California. I didn't see that. So I'm going to have to give L.A. a call. 
So, it's looking for the receipt for this the product. And I know I had it. But anyway, I brought these dates from the African store in the Mitchell District. Uh, and it's the first time I've been in that store ever in my whole life. So like I said, I'm being stalked and food poisoned, a store I'd never been into, a store I would never expect to find poison in. I can't get two of my favorite natural sugar products out of the store and consume them because they're poison. And I actually try to bring these foods back to the store and I normally would never attempt to bring any food back to a small ethnic grocery store because I know their overhead is not like a large store and they're probably not going to take it back. Normally their policy is if you open something, then they can't take it back because they can't return to the wholesale. wholesale. So I also inquired about the person, inquired with the person that uh, one of the persons that I try to return this product to and ask him, how are they getting the product? Wondering if it was a distributor or somebody that he knew or, you know, I didn't ask him that, of course. I'm just trying to figure out how, trying to figure out how this product was poisoned because I'd never been in the store in my whole entire life and I was stalked going in the store to get these two, the several products that I got. And when I came back to the return of the product, I was stopped again as there were two fine gentlemen standing by the dates just discussing something. But after taking a second look at them, they appeared to be stalkers. And I'm not just making stuff up and overreacting. I've been stalked now for over five years from Minneapolis to Milwaukee to West Dallas to Lake Tomahawk, anywhere and everywhere I go. So I have begun to know the mannerisms of the stalker, you know, when, like I said, I wouldn't even, you know, wasn't trying to look for stalkers, but they were sitting there talking by the dates for so long, after a while, I just said, hey, wait a minute, somebody here knew something that these, you know, dates were poisoning. So, I'm going to give the the packer, the call on these dates, product of Saudi Arabia. But when something is obviously shipped from one place and packed another place, uh, the origin of the poison, you know, needs to be determined. So, another incident with the dates and the honey. I attempted to buy honey on June 20th, Naked Wild Honey, from Pick and Save, in West Dallas, 2625 108th at the Cleveland Shopping Center. And I get home with the honey, and it was tainted, or food poison. I take a couple of sips of that honey, and I get a bad headache, stomach ache. I'm sick. I return the honey immediately. I know what honey tastes like. It's a natural food product. So, this honey right here, I didn't notice it was tainted at first. You know, so you might not notice the poison at first in your food. You might not notice it, of course, until you're finished eating it and you're sick in the hospital where I don't want to be. But when I put, when I took a couple of sips of the honey, I didn't, and I, was, I didn't exactly notice it at first, but then I put a nice portion of the honey in a pot of tea. And as soon as I had a sip of that tea, I got a bad headache. So I knew something was wrong with the honey because before I put the honey in my tea pot with the same ingredients, I didn't have any headaches or stomach aches or anything like that. So that was one of the tip-offs for this honey being bad. And as I began to continue to test it, Every time I took a sip of it, I'd have a headache or a stomach ache or something like that. So, like I said, I try to return it back to the store. It's a small ethnic grocery, the African store in, uh, on the Mitchell, Mitchell Street District. Uh, 
Milwaukee. I've never been in that store in my life. And I couldn't get a bottle of honey there that I bought just a couple of days. It was one or two days that I bought this honey after trying to buy these other two jars of honey on 620, Naked Wild Honey, Return Tainted Food, back to Pick and Sell, at 2625 South 108th Street. So I went to Marshall's in the same shopping mall, Cleveland Shopping Center. And about, about two hours later, 18 ounce glass jar of organic raw honey by Gloria B's honey. The last jar. I gotta always be weary of the last jar or the only jar. So as soon as I get outside, I open that uh, jar of honey and taste it. This is the nastiest ass honey I've never tasted in my whole entire life. I don't know what the hell was in that honey, but I was not about to find out. After just tasting it, it was horrible. It wasn't like the chemical poisons. It was a different type of very bad rank, almost like the honey was bad poison, you know, like how a vegetable or something or food on the stove would go bad after a day or two of you leaving it there. It tasted like the smell of something that had gone very rank and bad. And honey doesn't go bad. You could keep honey in your cabinet for a whole year with crystallized. It might get stale, but it's not going to go bad. It's too sugary. So I took that back to Marshall's Home Bush, 2665 South 108th Street. 18 ounce glass jar of organic raw honey, GloriaBees.com. The other honey from Pick and Save was Naked Wild Honey. Let me tell you the reaction of the manager at Pick and Save when I go to return that honey. Uh, within 15 minutes of me buying the honey, or however long it was, a couple of hours probably after I bought the honey. I go to the uh, pick and save. As soon as I get to the customer service counter, within 10 seconds, the manager is at the counter. I said, hey, I have a return. Oh, I, he just kind of looks at me. He's not there to help me with the return. He's there to see what I'm returning. So... The other lady doesn't ask me any questions about the honey. She just simply returned it. So the manager, uh, who appears to be a manager stalker, uh, made sure that he's seen what I was returning to the counter, but couldn't help me with the return, obviously. So the other jar of honey that I bought at Marshall's Home Goods, when I opened it up and tasted it, I was probably right before the pick and save. I hadn't even gone a half a block. Before I'd open up that honey and taste it, I said, I'm going to taste this honey first before I even brought it to take it back home. Like I said, it was the nastiest, most rankest tasting honey I'd ever tasted in my whole entire life. So I brought that honey right back in the store. And as I'm coming in the store, the manager is right there. Uh, he speaks, but I don't speak back. And I just walk over to the customer service counter. He wasn't at the door when I first walked in the door. So... Their policy also, but well, she opened it, but she just bought it. Can she return it? She calls the manager and asks them that, and their discussion is less than I don't know 20 30 seconds. And he says, Yes, she can return the honey. So that was the story of one of my favorite products, uh, right there. I mean, a lot of people like honey, it's one of the best, you know, sugar substitutes, obviously, out there. But uh, now, poison, what is this, honey brother? And make it wild honey and glory of these honey. So it's a wide scale operation, the food poisoning against me, obviously, if I can't even uh, get a jar of honey within a uh, right, right, uh, what, what is that, like six to eight blocks from my house, the marshals on the pick and save, and then I couldn't get a jar of honey uh, six or seven miles seven to eight miles down the road at the African store that I've never even been to before, also had poison scent. Okay, what a shame. So I'm trying to get, just go over the stores that were in Wauwatosa, Milwaukee, Greenfield, and we're going to talk about the poisonous food in the West Island stores and the poisonous food that I've encountered in my travels out of Milwaukee and West Side and back to Minneapolis where I run into poisonous food. 
So I thank you very much for listening. Uh, please share this information. My goal is to bring these criminals to justice. So if you can, uh, please make a donation to my GoFundMe so I can get all of this food tested and bring these criminals to justice. Please stay tuned for my next video, which is going to talk about food poisoning and my travels back to Minneapolis, Camp American Legion, Lake Tomahawk, and also the food poisoning in the city where I'm living at right now, West Africa. As I said, I've got a big bag of poisonous food that I've encountered over the past couple of months in West Africa. Thank you very much for listening and please support my efforts so that, you know, we can stop this food poisoning so we don't have to be food poisoned at the grocery store or the farmer's market or any place that we go and eventually even come back to everybody wanting their own food or, and everybody knowing that the food is coming from a safe source. Be as healthy as you can. It's not grilling season for me. It's time for fruits and vegetables, even though, as you see, they're hard to come by. I'm definitely uh, going to get the foods that I deserve uh, somewhere else. If I can't get, it, get them anywhere in the city. But enjoy your food. Enjoy your day and everything that you're doing. And if you can't make a donation, please share this with friends and family so other people will know about the illegal corporate government food poisoning that's going on. Test your food for any discomfort before eating it. Uh, if it's a raw food or a cooked food, whatever it is, if you get it raw first, test it raw. T then test it cooked. And if you're still feeling the discomfort from foods like that, don't eat them. I mean, even if you have to bite the bullet and lose some money or whatever it is you're losing, uh, Mother Nature is the great goddess who provides food for us, regardless of what man thinks, um, that they can poison us at any time. I guess that's why they're all merging together. But anyways, uh, stay strong, beautiful, and enjoy your day. Thank you for listening.